So in this video, we're going to show how the standard basis of a space can be used to find the transformation matrix for a given linear transformation. <clears throat> so in a previous video, we've already shown that this transformation here is a linear transformation. I think that was video two, if I recall correctly. Uh, so what we want to do what we want to do is come up with a transformation matrix for this transformation because it is a linear transformation the transformation matrix a will exist uh, and so our job is to find that transformation matrix the transformation would be easy enough to apply to a vector like 4 1 without the transformation matrix but again we do want to be able to come up with transformation matrices uh, this vector if we did transform it this vector right here sorry if we did transform it directly using the definition here of the transformation it would be pretty straightforward it says take the opposite of the x component so the opposite of four subtract the y component and then here the second component says multiply the x component which is four by two so we would wind up with the vector negative five comma eight and what we're wanting to do is come up with the matrix A that accomplishes the same task. In the previous video, we identified the standard basis for R2 and R3. So in this case, we want to remember or recognize that this is a mapping from R2. We have a two-dimensional vector. It's a mapping from R2 into R2. And recall from the previous video that the identity matrix for R2 is the matrix 1, 0, 0, 1, and the column vectors 1, 0, and 0, 1 form the standard basis for R2. So it turns out that to make the transformation matrix A, one way to do it is to construct a matrix by applying the transformation T directly to the standard basis for R2 or the standard basis of the sorry, or the column vectors of the identity matrix. So one way to get the matrix A, not the only way to find the transformation matrix, but one way to do it, and the way that we're focused on in this assignment, is to apply the transformation T directly to these column vectors. So apply the transformation to the vector one zero, and put it into a matrix form, and then apply the transformation to the second column vector. We'd need to do them in the order they show up um, in, the, in the identity matrix. So 1, 0 first, then 0, 1. So apply the transformation to the uh, basis vector 0, 1, or the column vector of the identity matrix. And so when we apply that transformation, and apply t to 1, 0, what are we going to get? We're going to get for the x component, we get the opposite of 1, we get the opposite of one minus y, so negative one minus zero, and the second component's gonna be twice x, or twice the x component, so two times one. And then uh, applying the transformation to the vector zero, one, we're gonna get a new vector. So I'm just taking this and writing it as a, I'm looking at this as a column vector, right? Negative x, negative y, and 2x and I'm applying the transformation as a column vector to generate the column vectors in my transformation matrix. So the transformation applied to 0, 1 is going to be the opposite of the x-coordinate minus the y-coordinate and then it's going to be in this position it's going to be 2 times the x-coordinate or 2 times 0 so when we crunch this out, we get the matrix negative one, two, negative one, two. And if we've done this, oh, neg <laughs> negative one, two times zero is zero, at least it was yesterday. We're hoping it's that again today. So we should be able to get the same result we got here by applying this transformation matrix. In other words, we have now described our transfer, uh, transformation matrix in terms of a transformation matrix, which we can then multiply by that input variable vector. So we should be able to take our transformation matrix that we just constructed, negative one, two, negative one, zero, and we should be able to multiply it by 
for one written as a column vector. So again, column and row vectors, we can write them either, either way depending on what's convenient. So if I want to transform the vector for one, I should be able to use this transformation matrix now. So equals, this is a two by two multiplied by a two by one should give me a two by one matrix. And then we take the dot product of row one with column one. So we get negative one times four is negative four. Negative one times one is minus a one. And then we do two times four is eight uh, plus zero times one. And we wind up with the column vector negative five, eight, which is the same result we got by applying the original transformation directly to the vector 4, 1. So again, this is how you generate the transformation matrix by applying the transformations directly to the column vectors of the identity matrix or to the standard basis for the space that uh, is defining the domain of the transformation.